All right, another one bites the dust. Today I'm going to share with you why I switched from Final Cut Pro to DaVinci Resolve. So I've been using Final Cut Pro for about three years, I think. And overall, I really liked it. It was very simple, fast, and easy to use. However, for the past year or so, I think, I've been really trying to improve my color grading skills because that's the part that I enjoy the most when editing. And also I think it has the biggest impact on the videos that I produce on this channel, which is basically taking a simple camera and squeezing the best quality out of it when it comes to, you know, setting up the right settings exposure and also color grading and unfortunately Final Cut Pro became a real pain when it comes to color grading because it's too limiting. This is basically the main reason why I switched to DaVinci Resolve because DaVinci Resolve is pretty much the best software when it comes to color grading. However, to my surprise, after using DaVinci Resolve for about a month, there are many other things that I like about it compared to Final Cut Pro, so let me share those with you. All right, so first of all, I like the fact that you have a separate media page just to organize your media. It makes everything look a bit cleaner, in my personal opinion. In Final Cut Pro, you can do the same thing with workspaces. You can do view, window, workspaces, organize, and then you'll have something similar to the media page, but I find it to be a bit cleaner looking in DaVinci Resolve. Another thing I like about Resolve when it comes to organization is having these power beans, which allows you to save your most used materials, such as titles, effects, intros, outros, clips across all of your projects. So no matter what project I'm going to open, I'm going to have these titles in here in the Power Beans section, overlays and whatnot. And you can add whatever you want to this section. And it's basically going to always stay there across all of your future and also past projects. Another thing that I like about DaVinci Resolve is that when you insert an SD card to your computer, it's not going to show you this stupid import window. It's so annoying sometimes, especially when you have Final Cut Pro in the background, this window, and you just want to insert the SD card and maybe clean it up or just import some photos. But no, you're going to see this window exactly when you don't want to see it. But one thing that I definitely prefer in Final Cut Pro is the keyword organization. You can do Shift Command K you know, create like a keyword. Then you can, you know, drag clips to this uh, keyword and it's gonna basically apply to the keyword. But what I like more is that you can select like a range of a clip maybe from here to here. And I want just this selection to be applied to this keyword. And it's just gonna show me that this is so much easier to do in Final Cut Pro than in DaVinci Resolve. In DaVinci Resolve, you also have keywords. So I can go here and apply keywords, hello, name them. You also have built-in keywords actually in here, but I feel like in Final Cut Pro, it's just a bit quicker and snappier and easier overall. All right, now let's talk about actual editing, cutting clips, etc. So I definitely prefer the magnetic timeline in Final Cut Pro. It makes editing much quicker and easier. You can easily move clips around the timeline and everything is going to snap to its place. Also, when you import clips to the timeline, everything just moves. You cannot, I mean, you can if you want to, but it doesn't overwrite anything. Uh, DaVinci Resolve has a similar thing going on with the cut page, but it feels like Final Cut Pro from <laughs> AliExpress or something like that. It doesn't feel like Final Cut Pro at all for a couple of reasons. First of all, you don't have two playheads. I mean, you do have two playheads in here, but what I like about Final Cut Pro is that you have this playhead, which always moves with the cursor of the mouse, and you have this playhead in here, which you can click and move around. And this makes editing with the timeline, with the magnetic timeline, much quicker, and I think this is most of what makes it much more magical than the cut page, for example. I tried to use the cut page for like a week or two, but it just didn't feel right. Another thing I want to mention is that Final Cut Pro is much easier to use with the trackpad. I've been actually using the trackpad exclusively when editing with the Final Cut Pro. And again, I think it's because you can just, you know, swipe left and right, up or down your finger, and it's just going to move this playhead really easily. You want to move a clip around, you can use the you know, the drag feature. I'm using actually three finger drag to drag my stuff and just works really quickly and really fast, even with a trackpad. Whereas in DaVinci Resolve, you don't have two playheads again, so you can't really move the playhead with one finger. You have to press in here and then it's gonna move the playhead. That's why I actually had to buy myself a mouse. This is the Logitech MX Master 3S and it works really well. It's actually better in some ways because it's more precise, has more buttons, but I miss the ease of editing with the trackpad, but unfortunately it's not really convenient to do 
in DaVinci Resolve. Now, even though I still prefer the magnetic timeline when it comes to pure clip cutting, there are some things in DaVinci Resolve that I actually like more. For example, I like having the freedom to be able to move my clips around in the timeline really easily without moving anything on top so for example if i have three clips in here going on and i want just to move this clip i can select this and move it around whereas in final cut pro if i have stacked clips in here and i'm gonna move this gonna move everything together and sometimes it gets really messy especially if you have a complex timeline going on then also i like that you can link and unlink clips for example if i just want to move this video clip in here or just the audio or maybe i want to link two different clips together i can you know go here and link this and then link this video and this audio it's going to be now linked you can do so in davinci resolve and i'm not sure you can do it in final cut pro but one thing that i really disliked in the beginning when using davinci resolve is that when you move a clip around and for example you want to move it to the right it's overwriting everything which does not happen in final cut pro you just move it around it's going to move everything for you just like so but then i discovered this keyboard shortcut command and shift you hold basically command and shift while clicking and dragging and it's basically acting the same as in final cut pro but what i like to do more is basically select the clip again hold shift and command and then either press comma to move it to the left or period to move it to the right another thing you can do with this is when you have the media pool open instead of just you know dragging the clip and overwriting everything that's on the timeline you can hold command and shift again and it's going to basically move the clips for you like in final cut pro now one of my favorite things when it comes to editing in davinci resolve is this video and audio tracks it just gives you much more customization and also more versatility first of all you can rename tracks you can mute audio tracks which you cannot do in final cut pro as far as i know you can also enable disable video tracks you can lock video tracks or audio tracks so that when you do your edits it's not going to be applied to these tracks that you locked but one of my favorite features is using this auto track selector this basically allows you to work on specific tracks without affecting anything else so let me show you an example let's say i just want to work on this track in here without affecting anything so i can disable all of this audio tracks in here and it's not really disabling anything it just shows you that it's not going to be your edits your keyboard shortcuts and whatnot are not going to be applied to these tracks so again i'm going to disable everything in here and just select this uh, video tree track and if i'm going to do trim start it's just going to trim this clip basically and even if i'm going to try to duplicate this clip put it you know a couple of them on top it's just going to affect this uh, video tree clip nothing else really you can move it here just affecting everything on this clip and if i'm going to select video 2 now it's going to apply everything to video 3 and video 2 as you can see and i can also select just one audio and it's going to apply everything to video 2 video 3 and also audio number 2. this comes in really handy when you have a really complex timeline with a lot of things going on and you just want to work on a specific area specific video track or also specific audio track before i move on to color grading another thing i want to touch on is audio editing audio in davinci resolve is much more easy in my personal opinion than in final cut pro because you can add effects to a whole track whereas in final cut pro you you know edit or uh, one clip and then you copy paste attributes to all other clips you want to also you have more tools when it comes to cutting cleaning audio and stuff i'm not really doing a lot of audio editing i just love that you can add effects to a whole track and basically call it a day but one thing that i definitely prefer in final cut pro compared to davinci when it comes to audio is adding j cuts and l cuts it's so easy in final cut pro you just double click on the waveform drag it to the right or left then you add a crossfade in here then you add a crossfade in here and then you can close this to make the timeline a bit more clean and that's it so easy whereas in davinci resolve to add a j and l cut you basically have to option press and hold then click then you drag it down and then you select this clip and you bring it to the right or left which is not that bad honestly but i feel like it's a bit more intuitive and cleaner in final cut pro but it's still not the end of the world 
in DaVinci Resolve. All right, now let's talk about color grading. And honestly, there are so many things DaVinci Resolve can do when it comes to color grading. I don't have enough time to cover everything it can do. And honestly, I don't really know everything it can do. But I'm just going to mention the things that I like the most about DaVinci Resolve when it comes to color grading. So first of all, I like having the ability to group my clips to organize my color grades a bit better. So you can basically select a couple of clips at the same time, right click, add into a new group, name it however you want. I'm going to name it hello. And now basically all these clips are in the group hello. If you want to filter how you see the clips here by groups, you can click here with the clips grouped, select your group. In this case, this is hello. And now you can only see the clips that are inside the group hello. And if you're going to go here to this drop down menu, you're going to see group pre-clip which allows you to add adjustments to the whole group before the clip adjustment. Then you have clip, which allows you to add adjustments to a specific clip. Then you have group post clip, which allows you to add adjustments after the clip. And also you have timeline to add adjustments to the whole timeline at the same time. So let me select group post clip. And let's say I want to add contrast to the whole group. I'm just gonna do this. And it's gonna add contrast basically to the whole group. Let's add also some saturation. And as you can see, it applies saturation and contrast to the whole group. But let's say I want to maybe, you know, just work on this clip. I can switch to the clip mode, which basically allows, again, adjustments just to the clip. And I can, you know, change the white balance if I want to. And as you can see, it applies the adjustments just to this specific clip. But if again, I'm gonna go to group pre-clip or post-clip, it's going to add adjustments to the whole group this feature comes in really handy when you have a lot of footage from different cameras on the timeline or when you want to be organized as much as possible with your color grades but i mostly use it to convert you know footage from log to rec 709 as quickly and cleanly as possible so let me show you how i do it first of all i'm gonna go here and i'm gonna select these clips that were shot on the zve1 when i right click click groups zve1 assign to group and as you can see it's gonna look good now that's because i have an adjustment going on pre-clip this is basically a conversion from s-log trim to davinci white gamut and then in the post clip group i have this conversion going on from davinci white gamut to rec 709 so basically as soon as i add it to this group it converts all my s-log 3 footage to rec 709 and then i basically work per clip if i want to adjust do specific adjustment adjustments to uh, individual clips. Another thing I like about DaVinci Resolve, and I'm not really experienced with this that much, is having all these options when it comes to color management. You can select your color space, output color space, color science, all these things. I'm still learning how to use these things, but I want to learn these things. And as far as I know, you can't really do this kind of customization when it comes to colors in Final Cut Pro, whereas in DaVinci Resolve, you can, and it's actually recommended to do it in DaVinci Resolve. Another thing I like about DaVinci Resolve is the noise reduction tool. It works actually really well. I used it a couple of times and it worked just fine. As far as I know in Final Cut Pro, you can't really do it with the built-in tools. You have to buy a plugin. Whereas here you have it all built in and it works really well. And let's not forget the masking. Masking in DaVinci Resolve is much better than in Final Cut Pro. You have all these tools in here, rectangle tool, circle mask tool, Right, you have this uh, costume shape, I guess. You can customize the shape exactly how you want. You have the pen tool to exactly, you know, shape the shape however you want. And you have the gradient tool and move it up and down, up and down. So you have much more customization when it comes to masking in DaVinci Resolve. And let's not forget, you have also the magic mask, which I actually never use, but I know it works really well. And the tracking works amazingly in DaVinci Resolve. But again, I never really use it because I'm not really doing a lot of tracking with my color grades and stuff. But when I will do, I know it's going to work much better. And of course, you have many other tools in here that I can't really mention because I don't really know what they do at the moment. But overall, I feel like I'm color grading much better in DaVinci Resolve and also much quicker than in Final Cut Pro. Now in Final Cut Pro you can definitely achieve great results when it comes to color grading especially if you know what you're doing. You have basic tools in here like uh, color board, color wheels which are basically the same thing. Then you have color curves, hue saturation curves, color adjustments and actually I forgot to mention the HSL curves in DaVinci Resolve. I don't really know how to use all these dials in here, but I found that adjusting, creating a mask with HSL curves in Resolve is much more accurate than in Final Cut Pro, and it should be because it's a much more sophisticated tool. But regardless, the adjustments here are much more broad and basic, 
Whereas in Resolve, they're more, you can be much more precise and gradual. But if you want to take your color grades to the next level, you can use this plugin called Color Finale Pro, which I do not recommend actually, but let me show it to you. It basically has the majority of the features you will need to create a professional color grade, it has like maybe 80% of what you need from Resolve to achieve pro level color grade. But from my experience of using it like five months, six months, I bought it the last Black Friday. So it was like what, five, six months ago. It's just not reliable. It's not a reliable plugin from my personal experience, especially when you have a complex timeline. Everything can work fine in this plugin. Like, let me do some adjustments in here. Start some saturation. Right, but then let's try to do tracking, which is where you experience the most issues with this plugin. Do some masking and tracking. I'm gonna create like a circle in here around me and start tracking. It's not working. I don't know exactly what's happening. Click stop again, click right. Doesn't do anything. Let's click here. Doesn't do anything. Doesn't work. Let's try to move to a different place in the timeline. Readjust it. Doesn't work. Let's go backwards. Doesn't work. You see, this is the kind of issues that I'm talking about. And sometimes these masks would create weird triangles, square black artifacts that I don't know exactly why it happens, but it happens sometimes and it's really, really annoying or it would completely crash, uh, make Final Cut Pro crash. Whereas in DaVinci Resolve, I want to go to the same clip Let's see this clip. I'm going to add another node. Let's add like a circle shape. Let's see how, how much smoother this one works. I'm going to go here with the tracking in here. Click right and look how it works. Super quick and snappy. I don't have to do anything. And I know for a fact it's not going to crash or anything like that. Now, finally, in terms of reliability and speed, I still feel like Final Cut Pro exports videos a bit faster. I'm not sure really, but I feel like this is the case. But in terms of like reliability, they're almost the same. But I haven't really had a crash in DaVinci Resolve and I've edited, I think like six videos in here. So, so far in terms of reliability, they're almost the same. And I feel like when it comes to exporting videos, Final Cut Pro is still a bit faster, but I might be wrong, I don't know. Anyhow, I think this is it for today, but I want to mention a couple of tips if you're going to switch to Resolve yourself. First of all, give it at least two or three weeks because Resolve is a steep learning curve, at least from my personal experience. So give it some time. It's very different compared to Final Cut Pro, totally different actually. So you'll have to watch a lot of tutorials, maybe even courses. And I don't think I'm gonna come back to Final Cut Pro unless Apple is going to step up their color grading tools inside Final Cut Pro, but I don't think they're gonna do it. I feel like Apple is not really investing a lot in Final Cut Pro whereas DaVinci Resolve is always coming up with new updates and you can do so many things. So I feel like DaVinci Resolve is the future when it comes to video editing, at least at the moment. And Final Cut Pro is more for like basic users. If you want to just do basic video editing, it's fine. But if you want to go next level with your video editing, especially when it comes to color grading, I think DaVinci Resolve is the better choice.